A short time ago, I spoke to Dr. Clive Collins, who's a senior seismologist at Geoscience Australia. He says earthquakes are not unusual in that part of New Zealand. Basically, the reason for these earthquakes is because the Pacific Plate, of which uh, that part of New Zealand is, uh, is on top of, is colliding with the uh, Australian Plate and uh, moving southward uh, relative to it. So you get these um, occasional large earthquakes. So are there earthquakes going on in that region all the time? There are. There are smaller earthquakes. Um, there have been uh, large ones in the past. I think the, a very similar one in about 1929 occurred uh, not too far from there, and we've had some, I think, in 1994, but smaller. Um, so they, they do occur, but on a, on, a long, on a longer period than some areas. Are there likely to be continuing aftershocks? And also, can you tell us a bit about any threats of a tsunami? Uh, most certainly there's likely to be aftershocks. Uh, I think the largest we've recorded so far is a magnitude 5.7 that occurred not very long after that event. But uh, there certainly would be smaller ones that will continue for a while. There's no tsunami threat. It's about 50 kilometers from the coast inland, so um, certainly no problem there. Was this quake felt at all in Australia? Uh, we wouldn't expect it to be felt at all, not at that size. Um, we've had larger ones that have occurred in New Zealand, which we have felt in very limited areas of Australia, but no, not, not really. Dr. Collins, what determines how much damage is done by an earthquake? Is it the population size and, and where buildings are placed? Yes, it's, it's of course the population exposure uh, and the building stock that, um, that they're in. Uh, if you have old buildings, uh, what we call unreinforced masonry buildings, which are basically bricks and mortar, they tend to fall, the bricks fall out, um, facades fall off, and I think we've seen a bit of that in this, this event. Um, and of course, the, the depth of the event is another important thing. Uh, if they're fairly shallow, you get large surface waves, which cause a lot of damage. And that was Clive Collins from Geoscience Australia.